Good morning, mathematicians. We are thinking about our week 15 and survival review. This is a key for Monday. We are starting with dividing whole numbers. Now, these are our actual answers or our quotients. But boys and girls, if you need a reminder, let's think about what that process of dividing whole numbers really looks like. Boys and girls, this was our first problem. We were taking five holes, and remember when we divide, it's like breaking it up into portions of one half. If we had five chocolate bars and we were breaking them into portions of one half, we know that first chocolate bar would give us two portions or two one half portions, right? Then our second bar would also be broken into two parts to break it into half. Our third one, our fourth, our fifth would be the same. So we know that our five chocolate bars, if they were broken into one half portions, would give us 10 total portions. Boys and girls, we can use that same logic for breaking six holes into one fifth pieces. If I break six holes into one fifth pieces, my first chocolate bar would give me five pieces because they're broken into one fifth pieces. My second one would be five more pieces and five and five and five and five. And in all the six chocolate bars, broken into one-fifth portions would give us 30 total portions. The last one that we had was the most holes of all to divide up. Here we have nine holes. If we break them into one-third size portions, we would end up with nine bars, each of them with three portions. That would give us 27 total portions. This is really the concept of dividing holes. Now, boys and girls, we don't actually have to draw all the holes and divide them up like Miss Lehman did. I just did that to remind us of what it looks like. In class, what we talked about was keep, change, flip. So we remember that we keep the first number just as it is. But I know that I can make five a fraction by putting a one underneath it. This is still five holes, right? Then we change our division symbol becomes a multiplication symbol. And our second fraction is flip. It does a handstand, or in mathematically, we call it inverting. Instead of a one over two, it becomes a two over a one. Now, boys and girls, we have a multiplication problem. And we know when we multiply fractions that we can multiply our numerators. Five times two equals 10. Multiply our denominators. One times one equals one. So yes, again, that shows me that 10, that this problem becomes when I break five into portions of one half. We can use this strategy with those three problems as well. Boys and girls, that is the concept behind number one. Now let's think about the concept behind number two. We, are, we see that he runs three, kilometer, three ko kilometers and he stops for water every one third kilometer. How many times will he stop during his run? Well, if these are my three kilometers, I know that he's going to stop here at a third and here at a third. And then, of course, he'll stop at the one mile. Then he, in this one kilometer, He's also going to stop at the one third point and the two thirds point. And then when he gets to his two mile or two kilometers, then in this kilometer, he's also going to stop at the one third and the two third. And then finally he'll reach the end. That gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He has nine stops for drinking water. Now, if I make this into an equation, the hole that was being broken up was three. I had three kilometers and I was dividing the three kilometers into portions of third because he was going to stop every third kilometer. In all, that gave us nine total stops. That is the thinking behind question number two. Now, for question number three, we have to do a little editing. The person that created this sheet actually partitions the whole incorrectly. So let me show you what we can do to fix that. First of all, when I have these two factors, remember one of these factors I'm going to show in rows and one of these factors I'm going to show in columns, then the answer is going to be 
how many of those squares that are made or rectangles have both shading out of how many total rectangles I find in the entire shape? Let me explain that a little further. Here, boys and girls, we are imagining that this exterior line represents one whole. Now, I'm going to divide it up into four rows. One row, two, three, four. Notice you have to mark out one of the rows. I whited them out, but they actually did that incorrectly. They gave us five rows. We only need four rows because the fraction that we're trying to show is one row shaded out of four rows. So notice I used my yellow and I went in and I shaded this one row. Now, when I look at it horizontally, one row has shading out of all four, right? These are not shaded with the entire row. That is how we show one fourth in our shading horizontally. Now, when I look at it vertically, I want to shade one column out of the three columns. Here's a column that does have shading. This column has no shading. This column has no shading. So I'm showing one third vertically. Now, boys and girls, our answer, this one occurs where the shading overlaps. Only one of these rectangles has overlap shading, but I count up how many total rectangles I made in the entire hole. There were 12 rectangles in the entire hole. So my answer here is 1 12th, because 1 12th of my shape has overlapping shading. Now, this was a way to model proper fraction times proper fraction. No, this is not the most efficient way to do it, but this is a strategy just for modeling what is occurring when we multiply a proper fraction times a proper fraction. We also know the algorithm or a way to show it with equations. And that's what our next question is helping us with. Here, boys and girls, we have five fourths times one half. We know that to multiply fractions, you can simply multiply your numerators. Five times one is five over, multiply your denominators, four times two is eight. That is how we get our answer of five eighths. Now you'll notice I did these for us, but again, it's the same thing. Multiply your numerator, multiply your denominator. In fifth grade, we do not have to simplify our answers. Boys and girls, that is how to arrive at our answers for question number four. Now let's take a look at our last one using this diagram to show one half being divided by four. Boys and girls, remember the first number in our division expression here, that number is what we actually have. So what we actually have to divide up is this. We have one half. Imagine this is one half of a chocolate bar. If I have one half of a chocolate bar, I don't have the whole thing. I just have a half of it. If I want to break that into four pieces, I could divide it up. Here's a piece, here's a piece, here's a piece, and here's a piece. I have divided it into four pieces. The answer to this problem is how much of the chocolate bar I have related to the entire chocolate bar. I have in whole one piece out of, if I broke the entire chocolate bar in the same manner, that would be eight pieces for the entire chocolate bar. That is where we get our answer here. One half divided by four equals one over eight. And how does this show my answer? Well, what I did is I showed one half is split up into four parts. So each part would be one eighth. Boys and girls, this video helps us to see our answers for week 15 months.